So I'm Professor Stanislaus Wong from the Department of Chemistry at SUNY Stony Brook and I have a joint appointment at Brookhaven National Laboratory. And what you're going to see today is a perspective video that uh, my group and I have prepared on basically analyzing the use of nanowires for enhancing electrocatalytic per performance in the oxygen reduction reaction. Fuel cells operate on the principle of converting chemical energy from a fuel to an electrical current and that electrical current is used to drive a device like an automobile or, or a laptop for example. So they're essentially composed of two half cells, an anode half cell and a cathode half cell and at the anode half cell um, a fuel is oxidized and at the cathode half cell oxygen is reduced. Um, the electrical current that flows from the anode to the cathode is what drives the device that, that you intend to operate. Our group primarily focuses on developing catalysts that run these catalytic oxidations and reductions. My role in this research has been to initiate the process of developing these one-dimensional structures and starting to look at their properties. So in terms of what I've done, I've started with the development of an ultra-thin platinum nanowire catalyst, which showed very interesting size-dependent properties when compared with larger platinum nanotubes. Shortly thereafter, we looked at a very similar system like palladium nanowires. Uh, in this case, palladium is much less expensive than platinum. And uh, we looked at, can we develop an ultra-thin nanowire catalyst of this platform? Once we examine the properties of those catalysts, those ultra-thin palladium nanowire catalysts, we then moved on to deposit a monolayer of platinum atoms, and we saw very, very significant increases in, um, in activity as a result of that platinum monolayer deposition. So as, I, as we progressed and we moved into these hierarchical core shell structures, we wanted to ask another question, can we develop a alloy type nanowire system like palladium gold? Palladium gold is a very unique system because it affords us the opportunity to remove palladium and insert small amounts of gold and thereby change the properties of palladium to make it more active. In this particular architecture, we were then able to move on to that hierarchical system where we deposit a platinum monolayer on the surface of those palladium gold nanowires, and we see very, very significant increases in activity of up to tenfold. Also, we see very significant increases in durability where the nanowires themselves are less susceptible to being dissolved by the acidic electrolyte, which is very important in terms of the commercial application itself, where the fuel cell has to operate over 10 years to operate a car, an automobile, for example. So, so as we've progressed, my work is primarily focused on really rationally exploring how when we change the composition, like inserting a small amount of gold, how does that gold itself affect the activity of the nanowire and why? We make wires over particles because they have a number of beneficial features that help promote uh, better activity uh, when utilized as an electrocatalyst. A few of those features of one-dimensional nanowires include higher aspect ratios and fewer defect sites. Fewer defect sites means less chance of irreversible oxidation, which in turn Im helps improve durability and activity and overall performance of the electrocatalyst. Today I'm synthesizing platinum nanowires. So I'm using this soft template technique in order to create a nanowire network using platinum. So specifically, I added a platinum precursor solution in with a combination of CTAB, chloroform, and water. And after about 30 minutes, I will add a sodium borohydride solution, the reducing agent, in order to actually form the platinum nanowires within the inverse uh, micelle network. Another technique that our group uses consistently is the U-tube method. So how does a U-tube work? The U-tube is made up of two glass half cells with a polycarbonate template in the middle. We simultaneously add a precursor solution to one half cell, usually consisting of a dissolved metal salt, and a reducing agent, such as a borohydride, to the other. The precursor and reducing agent diffuse into the template, which is really just a piece of filter paper that has 1D channels going through it. The borohydride then reduces the precursor, forming nanowires that ultimately take on the shape of the pores themselves. So how are the size and composition of the nanowires controlled? The pores within the template control the size. For instance, if you want nanowires with a 200 nanometer diameter, you would use a template with that corresponding pore size. It's really that simple. We can control the composition by what we put into the reaction. So let's say we want a palladium gold nanowire with equal ratios. All we would have to do is add a solution containing an equal ratio of palladium and gold. 
So this technique is really exciting because it's simple enough that an undergraduate can do it, but it's powerful enough that it can be used to make advanced electrocatalysts. After the nanowires are made, we routinely use electron microscopy to characterize the size and morphology of the catalysts. At the Center for Functional Nanomaterials, our group has access to really state-of-the-art transmission and scanning electron microscopes. World-class instruments like the FDI Titan Environmental TM allow us to not only look at the crystallinity of the nanowire, but also how the nanowire itself was formed. Moving beyond the structure of the nanowires, we use a broad range of electrochemical techniques to look at the catalytic properties and the mechanism of oxygen reduction. We also take a unique approach and characterize how the structure and the composition of the nanowires evolve as they are tested under fuel cell-like conditions. This start-to-finish approach where we look at the nanowire performance as if it was a movie clip is really what excites me and is really what's distinctive about our group. So what is the actual future work that we envision for the, for the future of this particular subfield? And one of the things that we're going to try to continue doing is green sustainable synthesis of these nanostructures. The second thing that we're going to also try to do is to try to incorporate more of the characterization facilities such as, for instance, the light source, CFN, and trying to more adequately characterize the nature of these nanocatalysts, whether it be through ex situ or in situ type of studies. And thirdly, what we want to do is to try to couple much more in, inherently and more, much more intimately both theory and experiments to really try to predict ab, ab initio what it is that we need to do in order to develop and to, um, and to predictively uh, create catalysts from scratch such that we can um, use synthesis in a more rational and more directed and targeted light. So in all of these uh, themes, the aim is to fundamentally use nanostructures as a basis for the fundamental goal of creating these as novel platforms for catalysts in the future.